Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Shereen. I'm an interior designer in New York City and in this video we are continuing this new series that I've been talking about with starting up your design project. In the previous video, we discussed your discovery call and what you could expect from that. And in a video that I did last year, which I will link over here, I talked about the difference between a decorator and a designer. And in this one, we're gonna talk about the consult. What exactly happens during a consultation? When you hire an interior designer, you can expect to get the gamut of things. It's possible to get a designer who only does virtual work. It's possible to work with a full service designer. It's possible to hire a designer that also plays the role of project manager in your project. And it just depends on whether or not that person has the connections, relationships, and liaisons in order to be full service or not to be full service. You don't wanna make the assumption that just because you hired someone means that you still have to project manage and own other parts of the project. And I'll give you some examples of that. First and foremost, if you hire a designer that's full service, which Green Shireen Design is a full service firm, you can expect to work with someone who is going to connect you with valuable, trusted, reliable, and licensed vendors. So that means you don't have to go out and find the contractors on your own in order to execute the work that needs to be done. Why is this important? Well, let's say, for example, you're putting in a wet bar. And in this wet bar, we're gonna put an outlet and the outlet that we're gonna put needs to be in a specific place because we're cutting it into the backsplash and we call an electrician. An electrician will come in and put the outlet in, but that electrician is not going to close this hole or patch it or paint it and have it actually be finished. And then you might feel like you were stuck and you didn't know that that was gonna happen and it's because that's not the electrician's job. So in different projects, you usually have a general contractor that oversees all of the different subcontractors. In a consultation, you'll talk to a designer who might say to you, we should do a wet bar, we should put an outlet. But if you're not speaking to a full service designer who's then gonna help you find an electrician and the contractor to patch and paint and finish this, then this is what your wall is gonna end up looking like. Let's talk about number two. In addition to having these relationships with the vendors, you also want a designer who is going to be able to give you some ideas and suggestions during the consultation. A consultation is a relationship when you're the prospect and the designer is coming into your space and you're interviewing each other and it's a mutual idea or understanding of whether or not working together would be the right fit for both of you. So you're looking at the designer to see, did this person bring a measuring tape? Does this person have some sort of insight or foresight? What kind of training does this individual have? Uh, have they done projects that are like yours? Do they understand your design style or have you seen things in their portfolio that align with the styles that you like? This is important because some designers will design the same type of thing. If they are a um, industrial designer, then that means that every design they do is gonna have that industrial feel. And if you are boho and you want something that is boho chic, you may not wanna hire a designer that is an industrial designer. So reviewing their portfolio and ensuring that they're the type of person who wants to do the type of project that you wanna do is an important way to get on the same page. The third thing that's happening, which I just alluded to, is they should be giving you some design tips and some design advice. I'm not saying that they should be measuring your entire floor plan and saying to you that this is how you should lay everything out. They're not gonna give all of that information away, but they are gonna give you some ideas and suggestions. For example, this would be a great place to put this chair, or I wouldn't put this chair here because of the light. If you have a space that has floor to ceiling windows, the television I would recommend is the frame TV. Why? Well, the frame TV has an anti-glare matte coating on it that most televisions don't have. And if you're gonna use it in a space that's so brightly lit, this is the way that I would do it. Window treatments. Maybe you should hang a curtain rod up from your ceiling, or if the ceiling is really high, if we surpass 10 foot ceilings, then I suggest a ceiling track versus curtain rods. These are things that I would say to you during a consultation that if you and I decide that we're not the right fit or timing doesn't work and we can't work together, you could execute those things on your own. Tip number four other things that happen during the consultation is the review and the notes. So after it's all said and done, you should get some sort of takeaways. 
And those takeaways are either gonna be emailed to you or if you had committed to, you can write those down while you're there. I have clients that hire me for a consult only. They take notes feverishly. And then after I leave, they go forward and they execute on their own. And that's perfectly fine. If that person wants to get the full-time project manager, then they can hire me, but that just depends on what they can allocate as far as resources to that specific process, project, and what they're looking for. So that's the long and short of the consultation and what you should expect. If you have any questions about consults or you're interested in scheduling one with me, you can go to my website, greenshereendesign.com, and we would love to take a look at the calendar and see when we can fit you in. They usually run up to 90 minutes, and they're slightly different for residential versus commercial, but the other thing that the commercial projects get is sometimes they get a little bit of a concessions list, which is a list of things that we would like the landlord to do before the business opens up. So things that we can kind of swoop under the radar for them, and it doesn't come out of your budget for your project. Again, if you're interested in scheduling it, please check out our website. Otherwise, we will see you in the next one, Thursday after next. Thank you for being here. You could have been anywhere on YouTube, but you chose to be with me, and I appreciate that. I will see you next time, next Thursday. What did I say? Thursday after next? Right, that's when. Take care. Bye.